All right, I'm gonna preface this by saying I don't know if this is gonna work or not. Uh, regardless, even if it doesn't work, I'm gonna post this video because I can't be the only one who's thought of these things and wants to try it. So at least you can learn from my mistake. And if it does work, then awesome. We'll both be happy. The issue I have is this AC unit is also a heat pump and obviously we're in my garage. Well, maybe not obviously, but we're in my garage. You'll have to take my word for it. The lowest setting this has on heat is 62 degrees. And I don't need this garage kept at 62 degrees when I'm not out here working because there'll be a, you know weeks that I don't even go in here other than you know pull it in the car and that, that's it. Otherwise, I'm not really working in here. Um, so it's incredibly inefficient to have it kept heated up to 62 degrees all the time. And this is a common issue with, with these heat pumps. Uh, the other common issue with these, uh, or even window air conditioners for that matter, um, is on the cold setting. It doesn't either let it get cold enough or it doesn't let you have it up high enough. So some people just want to keep their room, you know, under 90 degrees. Maybe it's got some equipment in it and you're, that's all you're using it for. And the highest setting you have on your air conditioner may be 80 or something like that. I, I don't know. What I want to do is play around with a variable resistor uh, to work with the thermistor that is built into these types of air conditioning units and window air conditioning. Well, frankly, it's in just about anything that needs to tell temperatures are. And we're going to attempt to fake out the AC to think this room is at 62 degrees when really it may only be at 42 degrees and which is probably exactly where I want it. I'm going to keep this room probably around that 42, 45 degree range and that would be ideal for me. And um, yeah, we'll see how it works or if it works. Step one is going to be to identify the thermistor. Hopefully you guys aren't getting the wind from this too badly. Oh man, I need to clean these filters. Isn't this embarrassing? <laughs> oh, these are gross. You get your sensor exposed here. You'll see that it should just be two conductors. And we're gonna try, I may need to use a razor blade. Yeah, I may use a little razor blade. We're gonna split those two conductors apart so that we can access one at a time. Now that we're getting into the wiring portion, I did power the, the AC off. And we're just splitting those two conductors. Just enough so I get some room to work with here. And I'm going to cut one of them in the middle of the brake. And then we will grab our resistors. Grab these on Amazon. I'm gonna link them in the description. And what it is, uh, is a pre-wired potentiometer. Uh, and a potentiometer is like a variable resistor. So as you change this, the values of its resistance varies based on where the position of the knob is. Within that, we're gonna grab the center pole here and the right pole. Uh, you could also grab the center and the left. It wouldn't make a difference. It'll just vary which direction you turn based on whether you choose the right or the left. So we're gonna choose the right, uh, which will reduce resistance as we go this way. Um, so once we mess around with it and see if A, it works, and then B, how it works, we'll put this in the arrangement that makes sense. So if you want to throw it off warmer, you'll turn it up to the right. If you want to throw it off cooler, you'll turn it down to the left. But we got to first see if this <laughs> even works before we get too fancy, you know? I'm going to snip this guy right off at the connector. We're not going to use that at all. And we're going to want yellow and red. And I'm going to do a very half-assery wiring job and just leave it hanging for now so we can test it. And if it works, we can church it up after. The polarity here doesn't matter because remember, we're working with resistance. So there's no polarity to worry about. Now, what we're, what we're effectively doing here is we are reducing the amount of resistance this thermistor can show to the air conditioner. Uh, we're gonna try that way first because we only have to cut one wire to, to test that. If this does not work, we will then cut the other wire as well and we will tie this bridge it between both connectors, this one and that connector, so 
we can adjust the range of the resistance beyond what this resistor would normally give. So one of the, depending on how they have it wired, one way or the other should uh, allow us to affect the result. I don't know if you can read that, but right now it is saying that the room is 58 degrees. The room is not 58 degrees right now. The room is more like 51, if, if that, probably in the 40s actually. And yeah, I'm in a t-shirt, I run warm. Just gonna adjust our knob here a little bit. So we got our first piece of data. It's saying the room temperature is now 34. So by putting that in line with one of the conductors, we've learned that a variable resistor will fool the air conditioner into thinking the room is colder than it really is. We need to go the other way. So we need to increase the resistance. 2,000 years later. It's the next day. I actually ran out of time and, and was relatively frustrated with the uh, potentiometer uh, route and I've decided that, that that's just not going to work. We're going to scrap the potentiometer and we're going to go back to a fail safe which is resistors. Old school resistors. So I'm going to link these in the description as well. Um, you can get a kit like this that comes with a bunch of different values. Uh, there's probably 500 resistors in there for like seven or eight bucks. So great to have. You, you'll find weird uses for these things like this from time to time and, and for eight bucks it's a great thing to have in your, in your toolbox or whatever. So I started with the highest or the highest numeric value, but which actually is your lowest amount of resistance, which in my kit was one mega ohm. One mega ohm in line gave me a one degree difference. So that's good. That, that means that if some of you just may want to really fine tune it, one mega ohm resistor is only a degree of difference for, for this. And for the most part, all of these air conditioners, these splits, and even your, um, your window air conditioners, they're, they're all pretty much using the exact same technology and range and for the values of the thermistors. So what you see here should carry directly over to your, to your systems, if it's not what I have. Uh, 470K gave me six degrees, and then 100K also gave me six degrees, which doesn't make sense. I'm wondering if I may have mixed up the resistors on that because otherwise the values make sense. 47K ohms, um, gave me an 11 degree difference and then 22 K ohms gives me a 22 degree difference. So what that means is my lowest heat setting is 62 degrees, but we're taking 22 degrees off of that. That brings me down to 40, which is, you know, above freezing and kind of where I want to keep the garage when I'm not here. Um, never need to heat it to 62 unless I'm in here. Um, so this will allow me to keep this set it. It'll it's going to heat the room to 40, it thinks it's 62, and it'll shut off. So that is exactly what we're looking for. Now, what I'm going to do is install it permanently, and I'm going to set it up with a little summer winter switch, so that when we switch over to AC in the summer, I want it to revert back to its normal reading of the temperature accurate, because my the range that it gives you in the summer for AC is perfect, it's fine. It's just this winter thing that's an issue for me. So let's get it installed. So I decided to mount my switch to this little access cover, which is just perfect because it's hidden behind the front panel of the air conditioner. So it'll be out of sight, but very easy to access when I want to flip back and forth. What we want to do here is connect one end of the resistor to one of the wires that are going to go back to the air conditioner. Uh, and the other end of that resistor can go directly on the switch so either pole doesn't make a difference again there's no polarity with this it's just resistance and then the other wire that you have uh, that will also go back to the air conditioner just simply goes on the other terminal of your on off switch don't worry about the three terminals you see on mine this is a lighted switch it's all I had so uh, the third little spade there is just for a ground but we're not gonna worry about that we just need an on and off switch so again we've just got these spliced but this is exactly how it's wired from, from the factory. And I'm just gonna put a little butt connector on here. And now our switch. And that's all there is to it. I take the original tube and put that back on, although we won't need all of this. And this again just helps it from reacting to just quick little breezes or things like that that might pop by and cause it to kick the compressor on or not. So we'll tuck that all back in. 
I'm going to kind of route my wires back into this hole. And go in there. Two hours later. Get the frig in there. There we go. Push that back. So, there we have it. Now, right now, it's in the off position. We've got our sensor right here, taking that incoming air. And uh, the room is about 49 degrees right now. So let's uh, power this guy up and see what it's reading for a temperature. All right, she's showing 58, which is warm. Turns out it was just still a little warm from my hands being so close and on it and holding it, so it dropped down with time. Now let's see what happens to 54 when we flip our switch. So I actually went up to a, uh, a slightly higher resistance resistor because I noticed that at 40 degrees I'd be at the very bottom of the controllable temp range and I wanted a little more play than that. So now I've got about a 30 degree offset from reality, basically. Um, it is not 92 degrees in here, I, pr I promise you that. But that's going to be perfect, so we just let me just flip it back and make sure it does its thing. To get better than that, a one penny resistor solved that problem. Oh, plus a switch. Call it a, call it a dollar and one penny. Hopefully this made sense. Uh, if not, you have any questions, comments, concerns, or criticism, as always, throw them down in the comment section below me. Otherwise, everybody, thank you very much for watching and have a great day.